There is a process called Taylorism, but before you think that says anything to do with a certain tall, slim singer, actually goes back more than a hundred years to someone called Frederick Winslow Taylor. The introduction of the process revolutionised industrial production was probably the fundamental reason why the economic might of the USA was so important in the Second World War. However, it did so at the expense of the skilled worker and their ability to influence the production process. It's now being reviewed in the Western world, but its basic level is still crucial in many developing countries. So who was Frederick Taylor? Well, he was an American mechanical engineer born in 1856 in Pennsylvania. Like many other Quakers, he was deeply interested in industry. But rather than set up a business, Frederick set about how he could improve industrial efficiency. Having himself worked on the factory floor through an apprentice and then a foreman, eventually to become a manager and a consultant engineer, it seemed that the current method of production wasn't that efficient in terms of both machines and the labour force, and determined to find a more scientific and efficient way of utilising them both. It was generally in two parts. First was the task itself, which I believed was broken down into the most basic constituent parts. Each task could then be measured, scientifically studied, to find the most efficient way of completing that particular task, rather than the rather usual measure of the rule of thumb which he observed taking place. This change in operation represented an early form of time and motion. A worker that could be trained in a specific task wouldn't need to move from task to task, therefore greatly increasing efficiency, since only minimal training would be needed rather than a long apprenticeship, and the worker would only need the tools for the task at hand to repeat the same task over and over very rapidly. The other part was related to the management of the workforce. Taylor didn't have a high opinion of the intellect of the average worker, and that basically workers should just do the work and the managers should do all the managing, with no crossover between the two. He believed that the workers training on the job wasn't the right way to do it. He said it was the role of the management to scientifically show them the most efficient way of completing the task and monitor them so they were completing the job as they'd been shown how to do it. The result of implementing Taylorism that multiple copies of the exact same product, be they tanks, aircraft or any th other items, be rapidly produced and because they were identical copies, spares and maintenance were also easy since replacements could be fitted exactly the same way the original part did. There are however issues with Taylorism. The boredom of the workers doing the same repetitive task lead to disaffection and errors. Management being removed from the actual production process may not actually know the best way of completing a task, whereas the workers doing the task may, and Taylorism restricts the workers' input into the production process. If a mistake or an error in part of the production line happens and isn't spotted by the management, the workers have no way of actually correcting it. This can lead to large batches of the production being ruined or fundamentally flawed. It can also lead to an alienation of the workforce and the management, leading to have a them and us attitude, which can present problems in regard of industrial relations. The standardisation of the product can lead to the workers being replaced by machines, and because of the de-skilling of the workforce, a depression in the wages. On this issue, however, Taylor thought that the introduction of his scientific methods should actually lead to a subsequent increase in profits being shared with the workers, the more efficient working methods lead to a shorter working week, but this has generally not been implemented. So that, in general, is Taylorism.